Well, this is interesting. KISS, at the end of last year in early December, the band played their final two performances to cap off their iconic career. One of the most legendary bands of all time. There were questions of whether or not Ace Fraley and Peter Chris would be on hand to perform with them. Unfortunately, that didn't take place. But maybe much to the surprise, or maybe not much to the surprise of the fans in attendance, at the very end of the show, they played a trailer for what comes next in their career. You might have remembered we talked about this at the time. The band plans to carry on as virtual digital avatars in the metaverse, in virtual performances, and they intend to use cutting edge technology special effects to live on forever as the band. And so what that looks like is essentially holograms, advanced versions of it, better, more improved and refined versions of it. We can see examples of this from the very same company that has already done this with ABBA. You can look at videos of it and see it's impressive technology. Now, whether or not it's something that's gonna make you come back repeatedly is a whole nother story. But it is interesting. But to put into context of just how much KISS is betting on this technology, they have made probably top three of the biggest announcements in their career about how much they're betting on this. They have sold the entire band to the company. I've never seen anything like this. You, you typically see deals where the band will sell their publishing, et cetera. KISS has sold the, the likeness of KISS, the brand name, all of that, and all of their music to this company going forward. It is a massive deal. We're gonna get into that in just a moment. There've been a lot of questions about Ace and Peter, of course, performing with, with KISS. We've talked about all of that. This is a band that there has been questions about whether or not they were actually going to retire or not. The band has famously previously retired, come out of retirement, and we've seen this happen time and time again with various different bands, which is why so many fans are cynical about that. But it does demonstrate a real commitment from this group to step into this new world. So you might have seen a couple of days ago that Gene Simmons was actually in the news for a different reason. He was asked about this child actress, Jojo Siwa, who debuted this new look where she's taking a lot of inspiration from Kiss. And, you know, in the past, when you see that, you go, oh, well, you know, they're, they're kind of very serious about their intellectual property. And uh, in the comments when I posted about this, a lot of you were saying, you know, surprised that he didn't try to sue over this. But this is what Gene Simmons actually had to say in response to this look from Jojo Siwa. This is from Billboard. Gene Simmons totally approves of Jojo Siwa's Kiss-inspired red carpet outfit. She looks cool. And you can see here from this outfit, it's pretty much entirely inspired by Kiss. So what did Gene Simmons have to say? Did he send her an invoice? No, he did not. So apparently this has to do with Jojo Siwa's single that she's releasing called Karma. It comes out this Friday. It says, Karma's a bitch. I should have known better if I... I'm, I'm not going to read the fucking lyrics, but you get the idea. But anyway, so this is pretty much promo for her single. She's doing something outrageous to get people to pay attention. The outfit succeeded in doing so. It's not a bad outfit, you know? I mean, I, I, would, I don't blame her for doing this. It is what it is. A lot of people are like bent out of shape about it. It's this, it's just a kiss outfit. He said he liked the edgier look and that the haters don't get it. And they're probably just jealous. He said, never be ordinary, always be extraordinary. Jojo is extraordinary and she looks cool. And he's honestly correct. I mean, she's not, she's doing exactly what she should be doing. If you bore your audience, if people get bored of you, everyone's talking about that Jojo Siwa outfit. Some people are pissed, some people are not, but people are talking about her and we're discussing it right now. But so now I wanna get to this, this blockbuster announcement from Kiss where they are revealing they've pretty much sold off most of the business to this company just to demonstrate how serious they are. The terms of the deal are unlike what I've seen, and I wonder if there's other examples of this occurring, but it's really, what I want you to take away from this is that this is a preview of many more things like this. To come, for better or for worse. I'm not in favor of replacing live shows ever, and while I am intrigued by how they'll pull this off, what does this look like, I don't feel that same burning excitement within me that motivates me every week to go to three shows or more uh, during the busy season of the year. So I don't really feel that. 
I don't really feel like, oh, okay, I'm gonna go see it one time. The prices you're gonna pay are probably gonna be blown out. And there's that element that's really missing from this, which is you kind of want to see the person who wrote the songs. I mean, it's, I don't, I'm, I'm just like, it's, I'm, I know I'm watching a computer. I, I kind of want to go and see the person who wrote the song, sing the songs in their own unique way, in their own unique experience, in a one of one show that I can say I was there and this show was different than the show that came after it and the show that came before it. So here you have it. This is from Forbes. They've got the terms of the deal. Kiss sells music catalog to Firm, co-founded by Swedish billionaire and a member of ABBA. Now look at this. Swedish entertainment firm Pop House has acquired the music catalog likeness and brand of Kiss. The company announced on Thursday with the American rock band joining the ranks of several other prominent artists like Bruce Springsteen and Rod Stewart who have sold the rights to their catalogs in recent years. Yes, this happens often, but never have we seen that I'm aware of a band selling off their likeness. Maybe it's happened before, but for me, this is um, uncharted territory to say the least. When they say they're selling off their likeness, what they mean is the kiss image, those the face paint, all of that, the likeness, they can do whatever they want with the kiss brand and, and kiss did whatever they want. I mean, pinball machines, socks, coffins, you name it. Kiss exploited their intellectual property. I don't mean that in a bad way. Like they, they, use their likeness to make money no judgment but they did that in a in a way where at times it was like oh man y'all are really shameless out here with the business but uh in a press release well, let's just go straight to the press release here i just want to see exactly what they're saying so this is from pop house their website directly so it says pop house has today concluded a landmark agreement with the iconic band kiss pop house is the swedish entertainment and music investment firm renowned for its development of brand building activities in music in entertainment such as the groundbreaking abba voyage show in london in which pop house is the founding investor and i'm going to show you that and look it's impressive it is impressive is it something i'm going to see more than once like i went and saw phantom of the opera once and i never needed to see it again i went to broadway i thought it was extraordinary i was very impressed but I don't need to keep going back. And so it's it's just interesting in that way. And and maybe maybe that's maybe they know that. Maybe they don't know that. Maybe there are people who will go more than once. Is there anybody in the comments here that is a rock centered channel that is a KISS fan that feels like they're gonna go more than once? Sincerely, I would love to hear from you in the comments. But uh and, and this is an interesting deal to me because I think that it's something different. And and listen to this, it says they will follow its unique value add approach drawing upon its world-class in-house creative and storytelling expertise to unlock new audiences and revenue streams so what they're saying to you right there is the question i just asked which is is this necessarily for the kiss fans that are pre-existing that went to see them live a bunch a portion of it yes a, a large portion of it but it sounds like they're going for something totally different as well um so pop house will use its proven industry defining playbook to create new content and experiences to enrich the KISS catalog for fans, old and new, actively seeking to enrich and add value to the brands and artists it partners with in inclusivity and community have always been vital to the KISS experience and Pop House is committed to nurture that going forward. The head of investment at Pop House said KISS is one of the most recognized and iconic brands in the history of music. Uh, no, no doubts there. They redefined the concept of rock shows and have always taken their artistry to new uncharted territories. The band's consistently been able to appeal. They're going to do it from next generations, etc. They've sold over 100 million worldwide. They brought their 50 year career to continue to push the boundaries in pop culture. The band's enigmatic personas, unparalleled band attributes, and iconic imagery have made them a cultural force and a legendary act with multi generational appeal will safeguard and enrich the legacy through future global endeavors by bringing breathing new life into their characters and personas while also leveraging and elevating the virtual world of KISS. The virtual world of KISS, what the hell does that mean? What are you up to? Probably KISS video games. Gene Simmons has commented on the deal. He said, we've always been breaking new ground in pop culture and this partnership will ensure that we continue to do so for years to come because what Pop House is doing is breaking rules. We already have several plans in development where the Avatar show is one, a biopic another, and a KISS-themed experience a third. The future could not be more exciting. A biopic on KISS is very exciting, and it, and it, would, be, it would do probably very well. So, you know, 
Do you need to sell your whole company for that? Do you need to sell your whole likeness and all that to do that? I don't know, but when you see what they're getting paid, I wouldn't question it. And a KISS themed experience, what does that mean? What is that KISS themed experience? A KISS theme park, something within a, ki a, ki a theme park, I don't know, very interesting. Paul Stanley, our journey with Pop House is fueled by the desire to eternally resonate across diverse facets of global culture. As we embark on this venture, we aim to weave our legacy into the tapestry of different worlds, ensuring that KISS experience continues to captivate both our devoted fans uh, and those yet to discover the thrill. This partnership is not just a chapter, it's an eternal symp symphony of rock and roll immortality, unless they choose to sell it in the future, um, then it's not. But um, the partnership with KISS, Mark, I don't know if there's anything in that where they can't do that, but the partnership with KISS marks Pop House's second investment outside of Sweden. Uh, they got Cindy Lauper's music catalog. Um, and so, interesting. A lot of this stuff going on right now with acquisitions of catalogs, but not something I've seen where you're getting likeness from the band. So I wanna show you when, when we talk about how advanced this is and what they're doing, this is what it looks like from ABBA's perspective, that shows out there and then you can get an idea of how they're going to apply it to KISS. It is interesting, but how they scale this up remains to be seen. This is the first look trailer that they released and uh, you can get an idea. These are all avatars. Those are not real people. They supposedly change through the ages during the show, different eras of the band, it's interesting. I bet a lot of iconic acts are looking at this right now and going, that's compelling. That's interesting. You know, this is kind of, for me, like a Vegas style experience. It seems like this is gonna be a way for them to kind of have a residency in perpetuity because you build this into some theater in Vegas, probably charge like three, 400 bucks year round and all the tourists that come into town are gonna come see it at least once. When I watch this, I'm like, that's what I see. And what'll be even more interesting is, does this show happen in a place like The Sphere? Where do you do this show? It's, it's all very interesting to see how this is playing out and unfolding, but Kiss has sold their likeness, their, their music, everything to this company. So they're betting big on this. It's one of the biggest announcements of their career, hands down, and this is, a pivotal moment in music where we're gonna probably see more people doing this. It's exciting. I'm also totally against replacing live shows, but with, but with KISS, I do respect this because they finished their career and I have no problem with a band that wants to do this after they've retired. I don't have a problem with that because this is not replacing, they're done with playing live. You know, I, I believe that. Just you looking at their age, I believe they're done playing live touring wise. I'm not so, I mean, I could see them popping up once here and there. Touring wise, I think they really are done. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if this doesn't do well for them. And at the end of the day, if they're not performing anymore, why not sell your likeness? They're getting paid, by the way, in case I haven't said this, $300 million, 300 million. Some would say that that is actually not as much as people thought that entire brand would be worth. When you consider that it's not just publishing for them, it's also their likeness, et cetera. And I bet that that was a big part of the deal that so much of Kiss's career and success had to do specifically with their live show. You know, they, it wasn't just their music that people sat down and listened to repeatedly and repeatedly. A huge component of their career has been those over the top. I mean, I used to, before I saw Kiss live, I didn't really get it because it was not from my generation specifically. I always respected it, but like once I went and saw them and I saw them a few times, I got it and I understood it. And I'm like, oh yeah, I mean, they, up to the point they retired, say what you want about Kiss, they put on a bad ass live show to the very end. Um, so I'm interested in this. Would I go see it? Especially if the company's watching and they want to give me some free tickets, I would definitely go see it. But, um, the technology is interesting. It's no replacement for live music. I don't think they're trying to do that. It's just a way for those artists that are retri retiring. And we've got a lot of iconic acts that are getting up there in age where I could see you doing a Rolling Stones. I could see you doing an ACDC, iconic brands. Um, what that would cost them, I, I don't know what it would cost to acquire like ACDC or Metallica, probably the GDP of some nations. 
<laughs> it's probably very expensive, but uh, I mean, you're doling out 300 million for Kiss. So shout out to Gene Simmons. Drinks are on you. Big fat payday here. Well-deserved career from Kiss. I'm intrigued, but I'm, I'm not totally sold on it yet. I, I'm looking forward to maybe getting a chance to check this out. Y'all let me know what you think in the comments. Would you go see this? Would you go see this multiple times? Let me know what you think. And as always, hit that subscribe button right here at Rockfeed for the latest news and updates.